with television or anything that's appearing in front of our eyes. Because again, those that's a, a projection of belief. It's the other way around. It's not that, that images and what seems to be violence in the world produces a negativity in your mind or your subconscious, but the unconscious mind that believes in separation from God is has produced the distorted perceptions, which is the conflict, the violence, and so on and so forth. But what I hear here is, is a real important element of turning it around, when it seems so strong and you need to pull away from it a bit. Like Carrie's a good example. Uh, she wrote in some questions on the online um, thing that we have, and she was just saying, I want to train my mind I have to let go of this judgment. I really need to train my mind. I need a training program. And I said, well, you can work with the Course in Miracles and the, and the workbook lessons. And But further than that, she said, I'm going to remove myself from my environment. I'm going to go from my family and my typical environment. And I'm going to a secluded farm in Arizona where there's only a few people around, no television. It wasn't even electricity, right? You had that um, big year TV? very little electricity. Little electricity. In my personal living area, there was no. No electricity in your yurt TP and a lot of darkness because you were kind of in a valley, so the sun didn't come up till 10 and it got very cold. So it was this kind of inner, almost like monk-like experience of going into the cave in some respects. And literally when she first called after she came out of it, and when she took a bus to Austin, she said, "I'm like it's like I'm on another planet." I all these yeah, feel like that. Yeah. 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 Still right now, yeah. bodies yeah. moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because you, what happens is, and this is why I think it's valuable what you're talking about is that when you start to pull away from all the stimulation, the, the bombardment of seemingly stimulation, your mind starts to you give your mind a chance to rest and come into that stillness, very much like you did during those years. When you would go inward and just See, because I wouldn't watch it. any TV. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't listen to any. New, I don't read a newspaper. I can't. I block myself from all the world's teaching, whatever it was. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't even read it or watch it. So it was really traumatic when I would turn on the TV. I'd be like, ah. And when David came, he says, "We're going to throw in these movies. We're going to." And I'm like, I don't watch TV. You know, and uh, yeah, he, so the very first movie he puts in his Dark City. The Dark City, maybe. The Dark it. City, and I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of things were coming up. Right, yeah. and, and it was like really watching it and, you know, realizing how I suppress this stuff that I don't want to deal with. I don't like feeling this way, so I put a lid on it. So I, I run from it. Yeah. I hide from it. So and I don't have this, to deal with it. This thing called the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, and what I always recommend too is, because Lisa and I, we've gone into things pretty deeply, and that was, we were together to go into that, but I always say, you know, don't go into the deep end. First, go splash around in the waiting pool. Find movies that are light and joyful and inspiring to well, start I off do, with. I do, I do believe I have the best yeah. of uh, movies. And I then think. when you go in deeper, what you'll find is the Spirit will guide you in ways to say, if there's something, a movie that would help bring up something that you haven't looked at, and you can mm -hmm. actually work with the Spirit that way. Well, I don't have to look at it if been killing guys or raping or or seeing somebody else have it. It's like, I don't have to entertain my mind of that. You know, if I can see something to my lifestyle, more mm -hmm. positive uh, tapes and teaching and learning, that I can make a difference. They get so, the people come and say, I want what you have. Yeah, but you those know? people on that TV haven't stuck to you, each other. You know, and, 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 and that is a compliment <laughs> to me. That's uh, that I'm, I'm an example to them that they, that they like me the way I am. You know, and me wanting to be a counselor, it is my I have to right. be, you know. It starts off, in other words, the way it went for me is I was guided to by the Spirit to movies that inspired and blessed me, that, that I had a feeling of joy. And then, along with that, just like when you meet people that seem to push your buttons, it's really that you've got your hand on the buttons yourself. <laughs> the buttons are right here. It's well, not like other people. You know, people we all need whatever it fits in our lives, yeah. you know. And, and then that's understandable. What I saw was that music or movies <coughs> or songs or uh, all billboards, uh, encounters with people, meeting people, it was all valuable as I would open up to 
enlightenment in the sense that anything that I had a judgment about that I was still holding but on. Let, down. let me let me let me just say this: if where I'm growing and bringing my kids and the power of prayer and faith is helping to change lives and to be healed people out there, it's worth it. You know, it's your, perfect. your guidance that you're being drawn exactly. to that positively. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I went to Blockbusters with your guide, and I could hardly find one movie in the Blockbusters stuff in there. There is a lot of the movies out there are just really trash. I mean, and they may bring up these buttons and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, that's why I put the guide together, because I thought something that would help you select movies that really would... would be more helpful than yeah. wading through just gobs and gobs yeah. of movies. Again, prayer and meditation and educating the Spirit will bring all of that to that. Sure, that's we it. Have okay, so to but can we still get, uh, um, either I'm missing it or something, so, you know, is the idea that you want to keep, you know, you stay away from all the news and stay away from and seclude yourself from what, but oh, no, no. that's the better thing? What is important? It, is you'll be guided intuitively. In other words, if if you notice with people you meet or watching the news or with movies and this and that that you have a lot of stuff coming up, what Lisa was just saying and what we work on is is just realize that it's not something outside of your mind that that needs to be healed. It's not on the screen. That the whole this whole cosmos is the is a fooling to think that things that happen in the world upset you. And, and what we're showing is it's, it's your mind and your perception. You're always upsetting it's not yourself. It's not the big bad TV. It's not right. the big bad show. And it's what is in your mind. Right. Right. Well, I would have these conversations a lot of times with students where they'd say, I have children, they'd say, for example. Mm -hmm. And they would say, the, one, the husband and wife would have this big argument, and they'd say, let's get David to talk about this a little bit. The wife would say, um, there's all this trash. I've never seen so much trash on TV and movies and this and that. And, and I think, you know, we need to... We can't just leave our TV unmonitored and let them sit there like zombies and watch all this wild, crazy stuff, violence and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, there's, some, there's got to be a way to be more helpful than just leaving kids with unstructured time to watch all this stuff on TV. And her husband would say, who was not even into the course, would say, it's all in your mind. He said, <laughs> I, I watched all that stuff when I was a kid and I turned out great. <laughs> Uh, you know, he, he would use, he would use himself as an example. He said, I came through the worst kind of things. Of, my parents put all this stuff on, and you know, I, I turned out great. And he would say, besides, if it's all your perception, then there should be a way you should be able to train your mind so that you're not influenced by the images. You should be able to have be so straight in the faith of God. So they would come together and they'd say, what do we do? And I would say, I think what would be helpful is... It's, I agree that it's not helpful to just let kids just turn on the TV and surf and, and watch anything that they are drawn to. In fact, Polly is in, gets into all kinds of, on the internet, <laughs> finds all kinds of different things and this and that. So I said, I think it's helpful if you are, are talk to your children and decide movies that you feel would be very helpful and, and watch them together and yeah, talk, because I want them and to talk as a family. someone in life, right. not another cuckoo who can't do anything yes. in life so, because what they saw and did. In that sense, I was agreeing too with, I was agreeing with the wife saying it's helpful to come together and, mm -hmm. and to use movies as open communication and if something comes up where there's a charge or disagreement, then talk about it as a family. Mm -hmm. Let it spur on open communication. The, 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 way when the, kids, the way they're going to be raised, brought up at home first and everything, this this is the future, because they're never going to forget what they learn when they start growing. Well, what if they're in Unless the future? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to finish my story. The flip side is, the husband, there was a grain of truth in both what, what both of them were saying, in the sense that the husband was absolutely correct, that, that there's nothing in form and images that can, you know, people, people talk about negative energy and negative vibes and this and that, it comes back to your own mind. Everything is an opportunity to, to be healed and to flesh out error. And the, the key dynamic is that the world is a reflection or a projection of what's mm -hmm. going on in the mind. So you've heard of 
physician, heal thyself. You might say perceiver, heal thy perception, heal thyself. The Holy Spirit's in there saying, "That's true." You, you can. There's another way to look at this. Yes. And, and Jesus seemed to see a mob that grabbed, teacher, took the body, he was and a teacher. said, "Yeah, we're going to crucify this body and." Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Obviously, there was a higher perception there. He wasn't perceiving himself being beaten and attacked. He was seeing that this drama was just playing out, and that he had transcended. Mm -hmm. The other thing I teach is that you know Jesus didn't suffer on the cross. The whole theology of, of a suffering Jesus for the sins of mankind. I'll tell people. I say, well, you look at yogis. That, uh, that fly through the air and levitate. You have people, probably your neighbor walks on hot coals and all these mind over matter kind of experiences. And this is Jesus Christ. This is a one who's recognized themselves. So we can go into the dynamics about how when you have no guilt in your mind, then you don't perceive the a violent world or a conflictual world because you've cleared the mirror of your own mind. So that really brings the two points together. It's not that I'm saying that, I, I think that what Carrie did and what you're talking about with your family is wonderful. And sometimes I'll tell people, you know, they'll say, you know, it just doesn't seem valuable to me to watch television anymore. It just doesn't seem like the best use of my time. My, um, and I say, yeah, that's, yeah. you can reach that point where you, it's just not if the best. If you watch the thing, it's, it is, you know, it's, it's, I have the discipline at home. You know, and they do go to the movies and rent movies. That they know what to rent, you know. So they've already trained on what what they can watch, you know. And they accept that too. They don't sneak and change the channel. And I see all these noises or whatever. You know, I believe in this simple discipline principles and morals. You know, I believe in all that. So, you, so you're saying that you know you're in error. You said that being in error. <coughs> When you're not feeling joy. Yeah. That's the if I'm not feeling sheer joy or some kind of joy, yeah. then I know I'm in error. That's your little nudge. <laughs> little and it's not the world out there that's in error. It's yeah. It's within the it's mind. Error. Yeah, not everyone has a trained mind like you and me. Uh, I've studied the mind for 25 years, so I have a lot of control over my mind. And, and you do too, obviously. But the masses out there don't. So I think it, it's harmful, a lot of this stuff out there is harmful to the average person out there because they don't have any concept of truth. They, they really don't know what's reality. Well, the place they don't know how to create their own reality. That's why they watch in television because they, they're not created, created within themselves. They don't have creative outlets. They're watching other things. We co-create us with God. That's why we're here. So but, you want to protect them? Protect, no, it's up to them. I, that's their path. Uh -huh. They have to protect themselves. I'm saying uh, we are co-creators with God and, and we have every opportunity all the time to create, whether we're writing, painting, entertaining, talking to people. When you watch the television, you're not creating. You're being fed. Mm -hmm. You're being fed yeah. something and most of the people don't have the mind to overcome it. Okay. Whatever you think about most, you become. And if you fill your mind up with garbage, you become garbage. That's what I believe. Plus, Not everybody can control the mind like you can. If you're two or three years old and you're watching TV, like a lot of parents... That's the point. Yes. I mean, how do they filter that? What's they the difference don't. between reality and the television set? Well, I'll say simply to address that is that universal truth is, is true without exception. So it's not like... Uh, if you can't say it's true for a trained mind and it's not true for an untrained mind, it's simply that what is true is true and it's a matter of opening to that training. So what I do is I, I say to people, um, you really have to trust your guidance and try to really hook up with your source and be intuitive about that. I've walked into situations, what this world would consider as cults. I can walk right into what people would, would steer people away from and say, don't walk into that because you may never come out of it or this and that. But because of my trained mind and discernment, I see that the whole world's a cult. <laughs> you know, I mean, you look at the, you look at the, you look at the armaments and the same characteristics, and I say, I'm not going to judge one group or one brother as being a cult or crazy. The whole thing is a, is a cult. But stepping out of that is really what we're, we've come to join together on, and, and that is mind training, like you're saying. And, we, and I think what you're saying is, is that stepping stones towards that can, can be 
you know, if you find yourself around a lot of what seems to be negativity, a lot of stimulation, these mm-hmm. kind of things. Sensationalism. Sensationalism is, you're just saying, a good advice, and, and in terms of mind training, giving yourself the opportunity to train your mind is to, to give yourself a peaceful environment, or I would, at the beginning, when I was just beginning the turn, I would like put inspiring um, symbols and things around to remind me to stay aware, or to remind me that, and Lisa's house has just got, it's like a museum of the Holy Spirit, it's just got all these pieces of art, and every piece has great meaning. Symbols, because when I was <clears throat> reading the Course, what I was learning, and what I was used to learning in was form, or pictures, or something like that, so what I would do was I would find pieces that would symbolize something that I was learning. So what ended up happening was my whole house turned into like this symbol house, so everything doesn't have, it all has meaning. So though I look at it, it would remind me, oh yeah, okay, wholeness, uh, uh, forgiven, uh, purity, innocence, uh, whatever I needed to keep aware in my mind. Now, uh, the light is shining in me now. Uh, so that I would just look around and yeah. it would be like, a lot of positive affirmations. Right, and that's what it all became was positive affirmations, mm-hmm. but after a while, it just became reality. It becomes you after a while. Right. Yeah. It really does work. It changes well, your right, Because it's all in my house. It's everything. That's it really right. does work, too, because even though I don't have it all over my house, I'm at my computer a lot, and my screensaver, I changed it to say, I am part of God's mind. And I'm beginning to believe you that it really is. <laughs> right. It's becoming a part of who I am. Speaking so, of props, remember that prop you showed when I was there with this, looks like a pie plate and it had good on one side and then you flipped it over. Yeah, the you bring it. Yes, yeah, we had, that is a good little, uh, just for Bresta who travels and gets all this music and sings, she, she comes, she just loves to make graphs and props and <laughs> charts. Uh, we had one called, she made called the yardstick from hell. Uh, serving all your judgment needs since the first unholy instant. And, and it's a big stick. I go into a gallery, I pick it up and people go, oh my God, he's got a stick. What's, what's he gonna, but it's, these are like just props and devices that are, that are helpful kind of reminders and symbols that, that judgment is, is where we, we come out of the now. And that little thing that um, yeah. Kathy's book is We limit ourselves at the time of judgment. Yeah. So it's a self-limitation. Yeah. So when I notice that something pushes my button, whether it's from something on TV or a movie or in this group or wherever, and so I notice, I notice something pushes my button, what, when you flush the exact, do you just notice them? What do you do with it? Well, know that whenever there's a, a feeling right. of upset that's there, it's, a, it's coming from an interpretation. Mm-hmm. And you have the power of interpretation. Mm-hmm. It's not what seemed to happen to you. It's your reaction mm-hmm. to what's happening to mm-hmm. you is coming from your interpretation. So that's the good news, is you always have the power of that interpretation. You can choose to interpret from the ego, which is the past and future and a real personal perspective, like taking things real personally, or you can choose to be in the present moment with your higher self or the Holy Spirit, which just takes you out of the personal and just kind of lifts you above it and just shows you it for what it is. You know, this, the very thing that, that could be, um, let's say you, we'll take something like uh, well, with Hitler, or let's say like rape or murder. There seems to be the murderer and the one being murdered. Right. The one who's doing the raping and the one who's being raped. Now that's a perceptual memory and it's coming up into awareness from the past. And as long as you divide that scene into the victim and the victimizer, yeah. the good guy and the bad guy, you're not seeing that the pair of opposites are illusion. You're seeing one's the doer and one's getting done to and there's enormous, it could be anger, rage, all kinds of emotions that come up from that. So what forgiveness does is forgiveness says, you just believe you separated from God. You tried to project it out onto this scene and say the good guy was doing something terrible to the bad guy. You tried to, to blame the bad guy and make a hero out of the good guy. And the whole forgiveness is, is showing you that it was all set up that you needed to heal that that rage that you had in your own mind 
you know. And Jesus said, before you get the, you know, the beam or the, the log out of your brother's eye, get the, you know, before you get the speck out of your brother's eye, get the log, the log or the beam out of your own. What he was saying is, you're going to have to get to this grievance that you've got against yourself, against God, and against everyone before you're going to be able to love. That's what that is. So if I take that scene and I just get back far enough that all I see is dots and pixels. You can minimize it. Uh, or, or like you <laughs> use the metaphor, the tapestry, the, the tapestry. dark and the light. Right, big picture. So if I see picture. that, that's processing. Yes. Forgiveness. That's it. Can I have a question about well, oh, Can I say something? <laughs> 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 is about about me and my growth and uh, becoming who I am really going back home to where I became or where I was where I am being and it's like everything has has meaning to bring up those emotions you know something at work or or you know the guy cut in front of me and all of a sudden I have this anger that just pops up and all of a sudden that's about me that anger and looking at that looking at that for me and, and my one of my sayings is it's a mirror it's a mirroring when I see somebody I don't particularly like or they're irritating me or whatever that's me I'm I'm irritated not them it's not personal in that regard but that it's about me and that's something that I want to look at and, and it's an awareness of all of a sudden oh that I'm angry where's that where'd that come from and that I don't even go dabbling into where did that come from I just go into present moment and presence has a way of like um, it vanishes almost and, and it's not like I have to work at it you know, I've been in therapy, I've done all of this and that, and I know how to, you know, do mind training, but it's not even that. It's it's an instant where peace is. Just by bringing present moment into it, just by going into that, that place, whatever that place is, and it just seems to take care of it. And then the next time it happens, I go, oh, and I do it again. And if it's something else, and you know, and it's like, I am so happy that those things come up now. Yes. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I just get really happy that, oh, oh, that's something else. Let's deal with this. Let's go on with it and, and be done. And that is so different than my past of struggling and, and suffering so much of just, you know, living in the past or the future. And then all of a sudden, to be here, it's just, it's very freeing. But there's no work to it. And it's like a gift to me. Because every time I get one of those, all of a sudden, I know, oh, that one's going. <laughs> it's going. Yeah. So it's not like work, hassle, there's no suffering to it. No resistance. Not there's no resistance. Out. And if there's it's resistance, then I go, oh, so there's resistance yeah. to that. And bring present moment to that. And it's just, you know, we're not getting to be fun. <laughs> it's yeah, important not to limit it your mirrors. The way I look at uh -huh. it. Not to refuse yeah. mirrors yeah. because they might challenge you. It's important to keep all your mirrors available and not arbitrarily say, well, this mirror might arouse something in me and I'm going to shut that mirror off mm -hmm. and shut that mirror off because, you know, I, I don't want to deal you, with that. You need I'm to totally have really mirrors really that are mind. true and flat, not a, a, say like a one in a carnival where at least pin drop, you jump out of your bed. And if the mirror going, is wavy, where is the wavy? That's what I mean. Uh, it, 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 I it's think in that my the head. Part, part, it. Of, part of it is, is seeing reality and seeing your own inner reality without having the distortion. What With you're the describing distortion. here is is the fast track in the sense that that all healing is is from seeing that you can't hold down or protect anything in the unconscious. Not being afraid 
of whatever's coming up and even being reflected and acted out, that's the fast track to awakening. Mm. And it also seems more in the moment. It doesn't seem like a long mm -hmm. process in that. And so, and what's going on, you, we've all had the experience, like when you have a good friend, a good buddy, or somebody you can really confide in, and you've got this torturous thing <laughs> that you've got going on, and then you, you, you bear your soul. You, you bear your soul, and you feel like you just have weights, like lifted off your shoulders in doing that. Mm -hmm. But what it is, it's not magical that one body is sharing with another body, but what it is, is if you're willing to share it with a brother or sister, and not protect it and think, oh, this isn't spiritual, and what do they think if I share it? And you pour it out, and you feel the freedom of non-judgment, of still being loved and accepted instead of rejected. It means that you're really not protecting it from the light in your own mind. That's really what's going on. So it's great. You're just mm -hmm. describing the fast track uh, in this, because, and, and you're talking about the mirrors, don't limit your mirrors. You're just saying, let it come up, whatever it is, and even if it's uncomfortable, instead of pushing it down or distracting away, I'm going to give it over and come back to the present moment. And that's just glorious. The other thing that I found in the present moment is I don't deal with the past anymore. And, and I, but I do find that if the past comes up in the present moment, it's just another awareness of forgiveness. Yeah. And, and just bring the present moment to that. So I'm never dealing with the past. I'm dealing with the present moment. And that's a lot different than living in the past and dwelling there. And so, it, and again, it just seems to vanish. Me, effortlessly. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, and which is amazing to me <laughs> after suffering for so many years. I mean, it's just like fun. Mm -hmm. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I, can I ask you something now? Well, when I first came in this course about six years ago, we were, Jennifer was doing it, I, I met with a group up in Van Austin, and this lady had been studying a long time. And that was about the time of the OJ affair. <laughs> And they told me that I was going to have to love O.J. <laughs> 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 I like orange like juice. You don't like orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, if I've got to love O.J. And, and, and what I think he's done, I'll never, ever get this. I mean, because I hate that guy. He got off scot free. He killed him. You know, it was such a big deal. Everybody had their opinion, you know. And of course, I had mine, and I knew nothing about the course at the time and all. But what brought up what that? What brought up such anger? And I wanted to track that guy and kill him. And you know, I mean, what about that picture upset me so bad? I, I don't have it now. I, I can pray that God give him a love filled, fear free day. That's about all I can pray for anybody. And, uh. That's not even a bad idea. That's what you did. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, just say something to that, that, that deep anger or whatever to that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just. Touch I, on and just, it just comes up, man. I just talked to a woman in uh, Oregon not too long ago, and she said, David, I listened to you for years, and you always would talk about this deep seated, buried anger and rage at God. And she'd think, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not angry at God. And then she'd go on and I'd talk about it. She'd listen to tapes and this deep-seated anger and deep-seated buried rage. And she'd say, I am not angry at God. I love God. I know that I love God. So this went on for years and then she called me from Oregon, I don't know, several months ago and she said, okay, David, I'm angry now. <laughs> she said, I'm angry, I was in a car accident, and this guy hit me, and I, I, he had, I thought, I had nothing to do with this, this guy blindsided me, and this and this and that, and she said, and I started just raging at God, and she said, I finally got in touch with my anger at God. Now that's what's very, that's what, it shows you how you can seem to put layers and layers of stuff in between that, but you were talking about co-creating with God? And reality and this and that, we got to get straight on some terms here because there's a lot of ideas that involve new thought. But what I'm going to teach you is that God is the creator of reality. 
and that we, Christ is a co-creator with God. But Christ co-creates with God just like God creates, his spirit. This world is a world of projections. This world is an attempt to hurl out guilt, hold on to a smokescreen, and then by the bait and blame, you know the old scapegoat term from the Bible comes from the scapegoat comes from the idea, the old stories they used to all the Jewish people would would gather together and they would have all these sins that they committed in the previous year and they would get Aaron and the high priest to find a goat. And then they would get this poor goat <laughs> and they would place all the sins that they had committed for a whole year on the head of this goat. And they would run the goat, they would have the priest run the goat out of town. You see how the attempt was <laughs> to get rid of the guilt yes. of coming from all the sin that had been committed. Chase, put it on the head of this goat and run that goat out of town. That's what a scapegoat is. Well, this whole cosmos was made to scapegoat all that hurt and pain and guilt of believing you could separate from God. So, yes, Christ is a co-creator with God, but Christ creates spirit. God creates spirit. And this world of form of time and space is an attempt at making up, I won't say create, make believe, to, to make up something that's unlike spirit. Look at the seeming murder and the, and the anger and the competition and the conflict. God has nothing to do with murder. Is that my anger God? Is it is? Yeah, so yeah. so your anger at O.J. was really the rage of God. And now it was put, it was he a scapegoat for me? Not the real you, though. The, yeah, I know, but the, but, ego, but, but the ego. The ego, the rage of God. Now the ego wants, the ego kind of said, it's possible to break apart from God, we're going to make up a playground here, a whole alternate reality in which you're the kingpin now, you, the world universal will revolve around you. You're the personal little eye. Sun goes around. Right. The sun goes around you like Copernica. You know, all uh, before Copernicus, all this and that. A very self-centered little eye that's going to be this little human being that's supposed to be all important. And and what the ego is saying is that ego is furious at God because the ego is saying, "Let my playground be real. <coughs> Let my time, space, cosmos be real." Let my competition be real, my murder, my my guilt, my shame. And God wouldn't be God. God couldn't grant that request because God wouldn't be God. God knows us as pure spirit. So what you're talking about is the anger coming from the authority problem. Jesus comes along and says, guess what? We've got a loving God. He loves us so much that you can even seem to squander your inheritance and live with the swines and, and go back and say, I won't even be accepted as a, as a son in your house. And he loves you so much, he'll run down the road, so to speak, and put the, uh, a, a robe on you and, and shoes on your feet and, kill the, and have a celebration. He'll run down to meet you if you make the slightest turn in that direction. That's what the prodigal son story was about. Mm -hmm. So you're seeming the ego's anger at OJ was like, was the scapegoating, was projecting all this inner fury at believing that you can separate from God and not getting God's attention or uh, acknowledgement that, that this made-up world was real gets projected out onto the screen as if it's this man. Where was it? Because I wanted him to suffer and I felt that God didn't do what I wanted him to do and let him escape, so to speak. And, and Sure, punishment. He needs to be correct. But punishment is a central characteristic of the ego's God, not of the real. The real God yeah. is not going to punish. The real God is going to run down the river. Whatever yeah. we do to others, we do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves. And so, what you're describing is you 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 start to get in touch with this rage. It mm -hmm. seemed to be at OJ. I mean, it was bad. It was intense. I mean, it was. It was really. But on the other hand, God. the counterpart to that was that black folks had the same rage. They were also outraged. Not that he got off. They were outraged that, that he had the money to be able to, to get buy the way out. But it they were problem. outraged that for once in our lives that somebody got away with murder. Mm. You see, that, way out. that psychology was going on yeah. in a different direction, but I, I believe it was exactly like he's saying. Our side is also raging God also. Yeah. Oh, everybody is on it. Every one of us. 
Well, God is amoral. God doesn't judge in the first place. So that's what we have to know. And then you wanted God to take care of the business. <laughs> God, was, God, God wasn't judging in the first place. <laughs> I, I wanted him. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. Right. And so I was very angry if it was God that I was angry. I know that I was full of anger. And, uh, but studying the Course and every day, you know, getting in touch with my higher power early in the morning, you know, when I pray at night, that OJ is one of the people I pray for. Because I remember, you were there. And, and I remember that. And I'll say, God gave OJ a love to your fear free day. And I hope he doesn't make any decisions on his own. But here's the coin. This one's what we had the other day. And this is what the rest of me did. Did Kathy just retreat? Now, a lot of spiritualities, when we talk about the good, this says, in good we trust. It's got fame, success, home, family, travel, romance, love, gifts, money, hot fudge Sunday. But good, a lot of spiritualities will teach, you know, accept and, and um, embrace the good. Accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. This is the flip side. It looks like a guy with a, a pitchfork. Sacrifice, suffering, scarcity, failure, loss, guilt, attack. The world teaches us that it's this is positive over here. This is the good and the positive stuff. And here's the negative. You want to affirm and accept the positive and eliminate or release the negative. But what we learn is that this is two sides of one coin. You said God is amoral in the sense that God is prior to judgment. Good and bad are judgments. Now this is the key. This is the key to enlightenment. The ego is saying it's possible to make everything good, good. That's why you guys were talking about the mirrors. And don't try to deny some of your mirrors as they're bad, bad. Got to get rid of, rid of, rid of. So the ego says keep this stuff, good, good, good. And this stuff is bad, bad, bad. But there's no universal agreement on what's good and bad. I mean, you know, you might have the some you, people would say you can't have one without the other. So as long as you focus on the good, the bad's going to be there. Because yeah. it's the same thing. That's what I was just saying about what he was saying. Right. It's crazy, right. but it was the same thing. From my perspective, wow, you should have seen Black America. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 See, as you go deeper into it, you start to realize that positive judgments and negative judgments are both on the spectrum of judgment. And what we're, Jesus said, judge not, lest you be judged, you know. So he's saying, drop the coin. Now, the thing about it is, if the world was all of this and only this, it wouldn't be so hard to drop. <laughs> this, this will be a quick, pretty quick, like, that is ego, this is pathetic. I'm going back to heaven. This stuff with guilt, shame, hatred, poverty, sickness, attack. Sorry, I dropped you in a minute. But, ooh, ego says, let me disguise. Let me pleasure, fame, money, possessions. Let me give you lots of things that seem to be good. Ooh, and is that what it means when somebody said, but they're such a good person? They're such a good per That's a judgment. That's, right. and that's on that side. Right. Even in terms of the world, yeah. like the Mother Teresa would fit on here, and Hitler gets on here. But in the end, in order to see the world as God sees the world, you've got to forgive. You've got to forgive the saint and the sinner, so to speak, and start to realize that God is pure love, and that God does not have anything to do with these. And then if you're going to be here now, that's just is. That's what it is. Yeah, you don't have to judge it. It, right. it is what it is, and, and that's here and now. Yeah, here and now really takes you beyond the coin. That's right. That it doesn't drops, exist. It just drops the coin. That's right. Now, this is the thing that when people have gone for spirituality, a lot of times people will... We've heard about the saints and the mystics and the ascetics, you know. It's like, give up this and give up that and live a life of simplicity and so on and so forth. But the thing that the Holy Spirit has to convince the mind is, is that on this side is pleasure <coughs> and on this side is pain. And in this world, pleasure and pain are not experienced as the same. 
fact, one is pursued. Let's maximize <laughs> those pleasure experiences and let's avoid or eliminate as much as we can this, not seeing that they're identical. And pain and pleasure both reinforce the reality of the body. They both really anchor the mind in the consciousness of the body or, or, or identification with the body. Joy, miracles, living in the present moment takes you to a transcendent experience where this the whole coin starts to fade away because that's what the mind really wants. But how many of you have heard like 12-step programs when people talk about addictions, they're attracted to the drink, to the drug, to the sex, to fill in the blank over here, and they try to indulge, indulge, indulge to fill up a hole that feels like right in their soul with food, with drugs, you know, with all these things, only to find themselves in this spiral in which they have to like give it up and they feel like they're repressing and they're, or they can indulge, indulge, and they feel empty even when they indulge because it doesn't get rid of the hole. So that's why the present moment is so important because that's where the miracle is. The miracle takes you out of this deceptive game. Which is just spinning. That's which is just, just right. It's spinning like this and it's going back and forth. Yeah. So is miracle an is or is that a judgment as well? No, it's, an, it's an is experience. It's, okay. That's where the detachment comes in. The joy of God and the strength of God comes into your mind and grows stronger and stronger. And this game that the ego is trying to play no longer attracts your mind anymore. This is the attraction to guilt. Ooh, this looks good, the ego says, does it? Here, come over. <laughs> Pleasure Island, remember Pinocchio? Jiminy Cricket, his little conscience was trying to tell him and guide him like you're trying to do with your children. Guide, guide, guide. And he's like, no, I don't want to listen to Jiminy Cricket. I'm going over to Pleasure Island. And then, what is it, little boys, the three and the donkeys? I mean, you know, it just gets worse. <laughs> the story goes worse as he gets lured over. But, but they try to say, come on, Pinocchio. Don't listen to Jiminy Cricket. You know, don't listen to your higher self. Come over here. And, and that's what the, the ego's game is. So it's fun to be able to expose it because the more you get into your joy of, of really being in the present moment, like uh, she was describing, like you were sharing, that present moment just takes you beyond this thing altogether. If we look at a situation and we judge it to be either good or evil, then we judge. Is it? Does this mean that it's neither? The it just says, is. It is. That's it. Yes. It is. And anything yes. that but does, it's, 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 that's one of the hardest things for one is to not judge as something that. Like, like the, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> the, the <laughs> towers, you know, <laughs> when they crashed into it, they all fell down. My God, it stopped the whole, you know, United States. And and we judge it, and even Bush, and you know, everybody says these are evil people, you know, and all that. All of this, but actually... Until you want to know one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to move to Canada. <laughs> 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 but uh, sometimes it can be the opposite. For instance, McDonald's, uh, holy cow, McDonald's is going downhill. Well, good, because the food they serve is... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy about that. that. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the opposite. biggest changes in my life, in fact, all of them, at the time I made the change, I thought they were evil, catastrophic, I was going to die from it almost, you know, it's just, oh my God, it's horrible. But a year later or something like that, an enormous good comes out of it. So was that good or bad? Well, at that time it seemed bad, but later on it seems good. So is it good or bad? It, it just, just is. is. <laughs> it all things is. work together for good. You know, what a beautiful teaching. <laughs> so the evil and the good works together. Well, all it is is you know, you know, you know, a coin. Yeah. This is like a currency, just like a coin that you would spend money on. The judgment is like a currency that keeps the ego seeming to exist. And then when you drop the currency, you said, no, I'm not going to spend your judgment anymore, positive or negative. I'm going for bliss, I'm going for non-judgment, I'm going for detachment, and that's that's where the mind... We use so much energy doing that. A lot of our energy goes into all these judgments and limitations and... Mm -hmm. and Pursuing this and avoiding this. Running. And, and classifying all these things. It takes a lot of time to, to, to categorize them and how do we fit in this and do I want this, do I want that? Hey, just appreciate all of it, the beauty of it. 
and actually entertain the supposed evil if there's such a thing. There's no such thing, I don't think, as evil per se. It's only a lack of God in something that uh, presents a uh, dark on it. Yeah, well, rather than both of it is appearing real. That's yeah, that's that's there's another example of, uh, I read this in a Sufi book, I think, the, the scorpion, he's in, in your bed, and you say, oh, that's so evil. But uh, the opposite sex of that scorpion, they love each other very much. It's just that when something is in your face, maybe you need to step away from it, but it doesn't mean it's evil per se, because some, something else will like it, maybe, much better than you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, scorpions probably don't, I don't turn anyone. <laughs> <laughs> A scorpion is no threat to a spirit, but to a body yes. <laughs> who's learned, who has cause-effect relationship ideas about poison and on and on. It's learned this false sense of the world, and that's where the, the threat is, but the spirit is not threatened. Well, the